Hello everyone, this is uh, uh, Jenkins Platform SIG meeting. We are on August 20, uh, 29th, yes, of 2023. And today we have uh, Mark Waite, Kevin Marsons, uh, Damien Duporton, maybe, and Kenneth Salano. Sorry if I butcher your name. So on the agenda, we have, as always, our open action items, mostly about Docker images. Uh, we have some ongoing work. Hey, Damien is there. Cool, because he has a lot of things to tell us about what is going on. We have, uh, oh, a new subject. Thank you, Mark, uh, about Java 11, 17, and 21 with Jenkins. Uh, if we have time to, we'll talk about what has been done recently on the Docker images. And we'll finish with new topics. Maybe we should put the new topics before this one. Anyhow, let's get started. Uh, on the open action items, as always, so the um, Jenkins Blue Ocean image is still deprecated and will always be, I guess. Uh, we haven't announced yet officially the deprecation of the image. And even if we don't build it anymore, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the plugins still leave and get updated. Uh, by updated, I guess it's only bug fixes, but they are still there and updated. Uh, what else? Oh, okay. Let's go with the ongoing work, if you don't mind. Uh, it's very concise what I wrote. Uh, image republication. Damien, you're the one I was targeting with this small title. Could you please tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. <clears throat> so we had an unexpected, uh, I could say, buggy behavior of Jenkins on the instance in charge of publishing the images to the Docker Hub. And we had all the tags, two or three years tags that exist that were rebuilt suddenly with no clue on why the Jenkins did not filter out these tags. Because we have a setup that say only build tags that are uh, less than three days old. In that case, these tags were clearly, clearly more than three days old, so the builds should never have started. The consequence is that this whole build had a former build, a uh, former script that checked the 10 past weekly release on the three or five past LTS releases, and it was trying to rebuild and republish all of these tags on the Docker Hub, which is not really good news. We saw that because some users open issue saying, hey, the latest LTS or weekly releases have Alpine 3.9 version, which is weird. And we realized, oh my, some of the images for these tags were rebuilt and pushed and some were not. That was a mess and it was really hard. So we decided to republish all the free LTS version Docker images that were uh, in the partial, uh, partially wrong states. We republished the, also the latest weekly back in that time, and we confirmed that the weekly last weekend, today's, were also published properly again. We announced that on the blog post last week, if I'm not mistaken, because for people that are checking carefully the digest of the images, for people that are really sensitive on this kind of changes, we had to let them know that a change was there and they weren't being attacked by a man in a middle attack. Um, so thanks for the help on this topic. We are really sorry for that inconvenience and we hope this won't happen again. Uh, we have applied a temporary measure on trusted CI by running all these tags that were, on, that were never run. Now they are all successfully built which consists on a pipeline with no trigger, just saying echo, okay. Uh, we cannot delete these tags. And yeah, we don't really understand what happened because no logs show any error or any kind of, oh, these tags are hold. So we don't know why this happened. So I hope this won't happen again in the future. We are still searching other long-term solution. Any feedback is welcome here, but yeah, that's, that's sensitive and I don't see something obvious. Beep happens. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the point. And thanks for the article, Mark. Uh, it's pretty obvious now. Uh, so you know. on the article, actually, I, I think, Damien, I may have understated in the blog 
what the impact was because Damien, I think you said that it republished many, many container images. It didn't just republish the three that we then fixed or the four that we fixed, right? We did last three LTS and the most recent weekly or two most recent. So, so there are outdated container, there are in what incorrect container images that are still out there. And we're not going to go through the effort of republishing those older container images because we don't support with security fixes or any other things on those. Therefore there's, there's not real benefit to our users for us to go back and republish Jenkins 2.418 or 417 or 400, 400. Those, those are just, they're just there. Did I state that correctly, Damien? Absolutely. In okay. the end, the real problematic versions are 2.415 up to 2.418. It's only three versions. Uh -huh. If you used the weekly 2.414 or older, then you, I suggest you switch to LTS line because the latest LTS is built right. on, is forked from that weekly. Right. So and if, you... if you exactly, and then the other says, oh, we now have free weekly version properly built again as usual. So you have to update your weekly version there. That's why we don't. It doesn't seem. It did not seem worth the effort. That's not the same point of view for the LTS. We republished all LTS that were broken. Though. That's really important because that's in the name LTS. Oh, okay. So, so, so two dot four two dot three eighty seven dot three was not harmed. Absolutely. Okay, I I misunderstood. I thought it could it was incorrectly republished, but you're saying no, it was not. So the republish process that's documented in the blog post accurately did replace all affected LTS versions. Absolutely. Okay, thanks. All right. Okay, and if ever some users were complaining about their weekly version not working because of an old version of Alpine or whatever, we could then redirect them to, oh, maybe you should use something more well, recent. Okay. If, and I think that's Damien makes an important point there. If you are using Jenkins Weekly, it is assumed by the Jenkins security team mm -hmm. and by others that you will update roughly weekly. If you're not updating weekly, you should probably choose LTS mm -hmm. and then you update roughly monthly. So yep. so it's it's not a it's a matter of choose the line that matches your update pattern. Of course. That makes sense. Yep. Uh, now the next subject is GDK21. Mark, would you like to um, move that later on because you have a whole section about the No, no, I think version. this, no. what you've got here is perfect. This okay. is, let's <laughs> go with this and we can Thank talk so to much. the other thing. The other thing is much broader than this. I like this one. Let's talk to this one. Okay. Uh, so we have just started with Stefan working on uh, updating the GDK21 version on um, CI Jenkins IO. Uh, because for the time being, it's a pin version, uh, which is not an early access version. So we'd like to have update CLI to update from the um, current unstable version to an early access version uh, when it is available. Am I right, Damien? Um, yes, on the infrastructure, but for the Docker, it's already using the early access version. So that should be easy to update with update CLI. Cool. Thank you. And then I had a surprise <laughs> last week because uh, it looks like Jenkins 2419 is already working with a GDK 21. It accepts when you're using a GDK 21 on your machine. Of course, I had, high, had a good look at uh, all the PRs and <laughs> all the issues and so on. I should have known, but just as an end user, I got surprised. I didn't have to use the minus minus enable uh, future Java on the command line. And I think that didn't make the cut into the official change log. Um, that's why I was kind of puzzled, but that's not a big deal after all. Who well, is using JDK 21 uh, as end user? Frankly, I, I can, I can, I think I can give you the rationale. At least my, my assumption of the rationale is we need to facilitate 
early exploration of Java 21, but we're not ready to announce official support of yep. Java 21 because Java 21 is not released. And so removing that enable future flag without documenting that it's been removed is pre-work for those of us in the development team that are doing testing. So it, it's, I think it was intentional in Basel did not publish that in the change log because when we're ready to announce Java 21 support, it will be because Java 21 has released and we're based on a released version of Java 21. So it'll be after September 19 for sure. Yeah, it perfectly makes sense. I was just turning the problem the wrong way. Uh, that's okay. And then we saw a change into the packaging uh, repo because uh, Jenkins Core now um, checks if you're running in a supported version of JDK. And we also had a couple of script two, in fact, script uh, one for systemd and one for Debian, I guess, that were also making this kind of checks and that was redundant. That's why Basil proposed to get rid of them. Which is so cool. Uh, now let's move to the Windows agent images fixes. So Hervé, who couldn't make it tonight, uh, made lots of work uh, because he, he wants uh, that we now use Windows Server instead of Windows 1809. And Not that's yet. a breaking change. Not yet. Oh, it hasn't Not been yet. yet. It's ongoing yeah. work. Yeah, exactly. it's not merged yet. But We'd like to tell us more about that. No need to. So we were lying to ourselves and to the users. Uh -huh. If you use the Jenkins agent, only agents uh, uh, that are tagged with a Windows LTS 2019, in fact, you have Windows 1809. Technically, these are binary compatible and you have the same uh, distribution channels. But on one case, you have the LTS distribution and on one case, you have something which is more weakly or less supported. So that's not the case with nano server though. We use proper, proper tags. It's only the Windows server core. And we fixed that on the, and discovered that when we added the Windows 2022 LTS channel. Um, the reason is because Microsoft changed their, uh, their naming and publication convention. We had LTS 2016 uh, for base container images. And for at least three years, we didn't have any LTS 2019. So that's why a lot of projects are sticking to 8, uh, 1809. So the goal is to fix that so we don't lie to user. We already are publishing explicit 1809 tags. And now the breaking change will be for someone sticking to Windows Server LTS 2019, the content of the inbound agent and the SSH agent will change because it used to be built on top of an existing PowerShell image, which doesn't have LTS version for 2019. So we switch to Windows Server Core, LTS, and we install PowerShell ourselves, which oh, means right. we might lose some element and the breaking change because it might, it might have a different behavior for build tools. Yeah, of course. Uh, let's wait for the first user to yell, and then we'll see. <laughs> well, it's it's the same it's the same kind of scenario as what we just saw with Debian, the upgrade from Debian eleven to Debian twelve on the controller. Mm -hmm. Right? We've got a user reporting, "Hey, I was running something that had behaved one way on Debian eleven. You switch to Debian twelve, it's it behaves differently." And it's just, "Yep, sometimes operating systems do that." Absolutely, but we have to be careful on advertising that as a breaking change with, in the change log with the explanation, because the idea is for user facing that issue. The question is, is it something I did recently or is it something that broke mm -hmm. on the upstream? And the answer is something breaking happened on the upstream and you have to fix it now or pin to the old version, which yeah. will continue to exist so they can continue maintaining their production. As the adage say, Friend don't let friend use latest. That's still <laughs> the same. Yeah, of course. Um, by the way, Damien, I pinned you in the community Jenkins IO discussion because we were wondering uh, what is the official 
Jenkins control Docker image changelog, and it looks like it is in the official Jenkins core changelog. You know, you modified thanks to the user feedback your changelog in the version in the um, uh, repo. You know, but it was already part of the official changelog. So had oh, cool. he looked at the official changelog, he could have had a hint that something was changing for him. Okay. Well, Kevin, thank you for that. Good job, Kevin. <laughs> uh, next subject, once more, it's for you, Damien. Uh, you did with Hervé, I think, or Hervé did it, a big work of a tool factorization between Docker agent and inbound agent. The end goal being merging uh, the two or three repositories for the agent. Absolutely. Since I took uh, months, even years, before being to start, Hervé uh, came to my help. His first step was to try to to uh, homogenize the tooling between the three repositories. Mm -hmm. So now we have one Docker bake file on each repository for all Linux images of agent, inbound agent, SSH agent. And now he's working on uh, Windows. And I believe he was able to do it. So you have one Docker Compose file for each of these. And the Docker Compose file defined as the same uh, goal as the bake file. We we haven't studied the new Docker Compose feature that allows also listing the, all the tags for each image, which is the initial reason why we looked into Docker Bake. That would allow us to remove hundreds of lines of PowerShell. So mm -hmm. I really hope we will be able to succeed on this one. Uh, for the end users, absolutely no change visible. We didn't break anything as far as we can tell. We might, I hope not. But the good news is that it allowed Hervé to quickly ship Windows 2022 support during the summer and to catch the Windows uh, error we see here. Another, uh, let's say, uh, ongoing topic here is then we are going to, and we are searching on test issues, but now I'm not the only one person to have a deep knowledge of each of these elements. Hervé is as well. So that allows us to improve the quality of code here. And the merge should be, we should be able to do it during uh, the, the uh, during before end of year. So no user facing things, but a lot of work under the hood and a lot yeah. of fumes, of course. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, next subject is Git 2.42.0. I guess it's about uh, Windows. It's for Windows. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yes, uh, Git is still a topic uh, that we should look into seriously oh. for Linux because right now we depend on the Git versions of the distributions. Is, yeah, bundled with Debian or whatever. I believe, I don't know the complexity of building our own Git. I'm not afraid of that, and I will prefer having this so we finally control the Git because Git has a lot of easy bindings. I did it for years with Linux from scratch, so I'm not afraid of doing this for with Ubuntu Debian. I I'll find out another yours. story. Yeah, Damien and I have a disagreement on this. It's okay that we disagree with each other, but Damien and I have a disagreement on this one. I, I... <laughs> okay, I just love it because it's fun, and that's not a good reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Bu building building your own Git is eminently feasible for many platforms, but I think therein lies madness. So, so before we say yes to doing that, let's be sure we have we resolve the the, the disagreement. Yeah, is there any PPA or an official repo that would give us a more recent version of Git for DB? I stop you right there. Or... PPA is really oh, highly right. dangerous. Danger. Right. I forgot. Exactly. That, that's either either build it yourself or or use yeah. the package manager Definitely. from the, the vendor. Ouch. So many bad habits I have to get rid of. Except for Ubuntu, we have one of the Git maintainer maintaining a PPA, but no guarantee on the fact that it works with the packages you have on your operating system. Mm. Uh, we use it on the infrastructure, but we don't want to use it at all on user-facing images like this. On the infrastructure, when there is a GitHub update, 
I personally check the integrity of the source code used for the PPA before uh, verifying the code. So I'm sure that someone is not doing what thing on the PPA and we accept the risk of breaking Git uh, on the agent because we can test it really soon before deploying to production. Got it, thank you. <laughs> Uh, now, Mark, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, let's talk about the various version of JDK and Jenkins. Yeah, so so the we've we've got a it's a three part story here. Uh, first part of the story is Java eleven will reach its end of public support in late twenty twenty four. Um, just the vendors upstream, Red Hat, uh, Tamarin, will stop supporting it. Jenkins does not support components that are not supported by the upstream upstream provider, operating systems, Java, et cetera. Therefore, Java 11 support in the Jenkins project will absolutely end in October of 2024. So, so that's that's the concrete one we can talk about. And that one's pretty easy. The the recommendation here is the the 2.450.3 August 7, 2024 LTS release will be the last Jenkins version to support Java 11, the last LTS version. Uh, that Now that, however, that's the easy part. Now we get to the more challenging part, which is what's next? And this is where I've got to, I've got to generate some pictures, some diagrams to show mm -hmm. it, because we we need to choose a new minimum Jen new minimum Java version for Jenkins beginning with September of 2024. That new base Jen Jenkins version Java version could be either Java 17 or Java 21. And right now we've discussed with the board and with the officers. And the initial recommendation was, please make it 21 because let's just get there. We'll have supported 21 for a year by that point. But I've got enterprise customers who, who can't move that quickly. And so I'll probably be bringing a proposal to make that thing be Java 17 as the required minimum version, not Java 21, and then propose a pattern for future releases where given that Java does a new LTS every two years, if we get Jenkins on the cadence of supporting the, the LTS Java, we then can say, and six months later or nine months later or 12 months later, that becomes the new minimum Jenkins version. Mm -hmm. And we get there, but not this time. That's the, that's the current thing. But I've got to get some pictures together to show yep. Java releases, Jenkins releases, and how they overlap with each other. Yeah, because there's some intertwining or something. Yeah, of course. Right, exactly. Thank you, Mark. So Java 17 support, um, yeah, it will. Java 17 by the vendors support continues for a long time. Java 17 support by the Jenkins project m will not continue as long as, as we did for Java 11, for instance, just like we did with Java 8. We ended support for Java 8 in the Jenkins project well before the vendors stopped their support of Java 8. Any Got questions, it. concerns? Um, I don't have concerns. I was just wondering why the current status, status of uh, Jenkins support for JDK 21, not the official one, but I mean, I know some people make some experiments. I think a Basil run the bomb. Uh, build with JDK 21. Some parts of the infra already supplied JDK 21, but I don't think it's running on JDK 21. What else? I saw lots of uh, PRs from you, Mark, to uh, um, test some plugins with JDK 21. And I also saw some from Alexander Bandes. So it's progressing, but do we have uh, a chart somewhere or something that say, oh, we are 10%, 20%, something, or not at all? It's not um... yet. There, I think I think Basel is actually tracking a, a sheet somewhere that that records what fraction of the plugins have already tested with or already actively testing on ci.jenkins.io with Java 21. I know Jenkins Core is testing with Java 11, 17, and 21 confirmed, and we know that the bill of material plugin bill of materials with its I think it's now pushing a hundred plugins that are passing tests with Java 21. And the acceptance test harness is passing tests with Java 21. 
And we know that there are a hundred plus plugins as individual plugins that are passing their tests with Java 21. So for me right now, we, we are about seven months ahead of the pattern yeah. we followed with Java 17. Java 17 released in 2021, and we didn't deliver a Jenkins version to support it until mid-2022. So I'm I'm delighted with our progress on Java 21. I think we'll support Java 21 officially easily by the end of October of 2023. Yeah, good thing. Um... Shameless plug, I try to run Jenkins on nightly builds of uh, Timurin's JDK 21 on the RISC 5 machine, and it does work beautifully. Um, now, if you don't mind, we'll switch to a new topic because I'm not so sure we'll be able to treat the recent uh, changes. And we already told about the most breaking change that happened lately, which is move to Bookworm. Um, that's what you have. The title is um book war made it first victim uh <laughs> anyhow so uh damien i think you're the one that uh added these topics am i right i'm not but uh, i feel like it's oh. a really good idea <laughs> who did that <laughs> i i think it was probably me oh then go ahead please so so we had a discussion i believe in the infra team that the the descriptions on the docker hub repositories as displayed to you to readers are outdated they aren't perfectly maintained and the idea was hey we should consider updating those short descriptions to declare that these things are deprecated. Oh, I know this was Alex Brandis. I know where this came from. Sorry, it's not even me. Alex Brandis is the one who detected this. We're using these old terms, deprecated terminology, slave, instead of the correct term, agent. And he said, hey, we should put on the on the page that they are in fact deprecated. Yeah, that would help. But uh, Docker Hub is already showing that it hasn't been updated in five years or so. Uh, Correct. So there, there are good hints that it's deprecated. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes it's not enough. <laughs> right, right. It, it, every chance we get to hint to people is is one more chance that they'll heed the hint. You're right. And the next one, that's funny because I think that's something we talked about a few meetings ago. And it's not me that, work, uh, that uh, wrote that down. Windows ARM images might be possible. And yeah, that's so me. Is Windows on Oh yeah, that's you. That's funny. You right. happen to have a Windows ARM machine, right? I do. Right. I have a Windows ARM machine because Microsoft was selling them and and I was interested. So, but I think the answer right now is no, it's not. I oh. haven't seen enough interest and I certainly have not seen enough any traction from anyone in the community to spend the time on it. Got it. And last time we talked about that, I thought that Docker was even not running on Windows. And, and that's ARM. part of it. It may not, they may not have Docker on ARM when, on Windows for ARM. I, I haven't even checked. I the Windows ARM any... kernel is missing some uh, important features used by Docker. Oh. Um, so with the uh, now Hyper-V, seems to have uh, have been recently uh, ready to run on IRM64. So that might be a solution, but it's missing critical features used for the container isolation used by default by Windows container. Mm -hmm. So that means right now, even if it work, your container will be micro virtual machines running on IRM, unless Microsoft starts to, uh, to publish these bindings, but right now the kernel modules are missing. And there is no reason for running a Docker engine in Windows uh, container mode. You can still, of course, use a local Docker uh, client that is compiled on Windows RM and already available, but you need a remote Docker engine somewhere else. Right. Thank you. There's there's real power in us having somebody who knows the depths of Docker in this meeting. <laughs> Thanks, Damien. Oh, yes. Thanks a lot. I think uh, that wraps it up. Unless you have something else to add to the agenda, we are at 30. No, any feedback, question, comments, remarks? Looks like we're done. It was a joy to have all of you tonight. Thanks a lot for being here. The recording should be available from 24 to 48 hours. And see you two weeks from now. Hopefully, have a wonderful end of the day. Bye-bye.